Hello and welcome back. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of flat files. You know, anyone who's been taking some images for uh, for astrophotography for a while will notice that you know essentially the the pictures always seem to have artifacts uh, in them that are related to how your telescope curves or how clean it may be. All right, and that'll do kind of what you're seeing in, in this kind of image here, where I've got some brightness at my corners. Uh, if you notice, there's actually kind of a ring around this here, and uh, and I've got a little bit of a dust moat. All of this is is kind of the result of the the basic cleanup trying to use uh, my flat my my non-flat corrected images. So if I come back here and I just start looking at kind of a, a standard image that we might have actually, not luminance, let's go with red. You can see, you know, coming right out of the, the gate here, I've got a little, little bit of the dust moat there and that kind of thing. And the problem just starts to exacerbate over time. This has already uh, had an automatic background extraction process on it. Without it, this is my original image, right? So you know, what I'm seeing here of, of things kind of brightening up and stuff is after uh, the system's gone through and tried to correct some of this. Now, you can get a lot more detailed with the dynamic background extraction process to really try to attack uh, this stuff a little bit more evenly. Um, and you can get some, some decent results with that. But, you know, honestly, you end up spending a lot of time doing that um, versus the quality that you can end up with just by uh, actually flat correcting your images. So as I was shown before, you know, this was kind of the, the basic level of, of cleanup on an image that, that was not flat corrected, right? And when you're looking at a flat file, it's really just an image that you're taking of through the same telescope at the same basic focus uh, but with an even light source. And you can look up online a variety of ways to do that. Uh, some people are just taking pictures of the sky at, you know, kind of twilight. Um, others will put a t-shirt over it uh, and, and just kind of get the settings on the camera to get it just right. Uh, for me, I use a little uh, tracer panel, a little light up LED panel. You can get off of Amazon for, for under $20 uh, that you know, you can just adjust the brightness a little bit. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll put uh, a, a couple of sheets of paper in front of it to kind of diffuse that light out uh, and make it not too bright for the camera. The tricks on a flat frame when you want to take it is, one, you, you want to match just about everything uh, to your light files. So you want the same rough focus point that you had, right? You don't want to be way in or way out of focus because that'll change kind of how these patterns and how things like dust motes uh, show up, how big they are. Two, you want to have the same, you know, kind of gain settings, you know, so if you are running, you know, if it's DSLR, you want to be the same ISO. If it's a camera with adjustable gain, you want to really make sure you're at the same gain level because that gain will multiply uh, the light values that you're getting. So when you combine that with another image, right, if you've, if you've multiplied that to be different than the way normal light coming in would be multiplied, you'll end up over or under correcting uh, your image. Um, and then also, uh, you know, once you get that together, you're gonna take a flat, if you do different filters, you're gonna take a flat for each of those filters, right? Um, but what I've noticed, uh, you know, an interesting problem that I ran across is what I call the coffee rings, which, you know, I'll show in this picture here should be pretty obvious. This is one that I, I did flat correct, right? Uh, most of this image is, is not too bad in terms of flatness, but, you know, I'm getting these, these coffee rings here. They're not the same as the true dark, full dark spot of the dust mode. But I did know when I was looking at my flats, I had a dust moat there. Uh, and it took me a while to figure out the, the telltale sign that I was having this problem is that if you notice, it's darker on the ring at the bottom and lighter on the ring at the top. And what that's really showing is that the dust moat itself was, 
between the actual uh, light frame and the flat frame, it was a little bit more this way on one of them and a little bit more that way on the other one. And so I went through racking, racking my mind trying to figure out, do I have sag on my imaging train where, you know, maybe I took the flats at a different angle and things like that, which unless, you know, you haven't kind of locked your stuff down uh, pretty well, you know, it was unlikely to happen. And what finally ended up being the case was my filter wheel itself was what was causing the problem. Um, and what that comes down to is I was taking my light frames um, throughout the evening, and then I would go back through and do a run like this to take a bunch of different flat frames at the end of the, the session. And obviously the filter wheel is moved between different filters in that time. And what was happening is if you think of your filter wheel, you know, it's a, it's a big circle, right? And it's moving around between the filters. Well, a lot of filter wheels by default will allow it to, when it's switching from one filter to another, it'll just go for the shortest, quickest time to get from filter A to filter B. So that'll mean, you know, at one point it'll move clockwise to get to the next filter. And then maybe when you finished your shift, it runs back counterclockwise uh, to get back to it when you're taking your flats. And that's fine when it's turning, but when it stops, is that dust mode ending up in just about at the pixel level, the exact same spot that it was before. Um, now I use the ZWO filter wheel. It has a kind of, a, if I remember correctly, an infrared kind of dot system it uses to try to line up. But I was finding that depending on whether or not it had gone clockwise and then counterclockwise back, that kind of thing, these dust motes were not ending up in the same spot. Well, there is a, a pretty easy fix for that, um, specifically for the ZWO ones, but I know other brands of filter wheels have similar settings here. If you go into the actual ASCOM driver settings, now I'm doing this from SGP, but once it opens this up, this is just the standard ASCOM box. There's a checkbox down here called unidirectional, and by default, this is turned off. So when it's turned off, that means the filter can decide whichever way it wants to turn, clockwise or counterclockwise. If you turn it on, then it is always going to turn in only one direction. I, I don't know off the top of my head which direction that is, but I didn't care. As long as it was the same way each time, that's what I was looking for. And I found as soon as I had turned that on, even after doing a recalibration, um, you know, it holds real nice and steady. So I recommend, you know, if you're having any of those issues where you've noticed this kind of light and dark coffee ring with the center being nice and flat, that you really go in and check uh, your your settings uh, to make sure. Because it was driving me mad. I had a few dust motes that were right in the center of the screen, and I just couldn't figure it out. Um, so that's, that's a, an easy way to fix that issue. But so getting back to... You know, okay, so I found I want now I know how to take a good flat and not have that problem, and I know kind of what my flat looks like. You know, at the end of the day, you know, how much how much benefit are you getting? Well, when I switch over to my other workspace here, I'll show you the same image, but with the flat files applied in the calibration process. And so if you see me jumping back and forth here, you should notice that the dust moat initially is your first clue of it just disappears right out you know it's it's like you magically erased it but also things like these bright corners here right I've got four bright corners there and they're pretty much just nice and even with everything else and then the thing that really bothers me with flat fields other than dust motes is you, a lot of times especially when doing a background extraction you'll get these kind of light and dark ring waves and I can highlight that a little bit more by showing the, uh, the, the curves process here. And actually, I'll need to boost this up. Just there we go. Um, so just doing a little bit of a curve stretch on here, you can see that light ring followed by a dark, followed by essentially at the corners, another light ring, right? Um, this is all just artifacts, right? This is not actually what was in the image itself. It's just the system trying to correct for the vignetting uh, inherent in my system. And mine is, is pretty flat to begin with. So, um, you know, it's it can be subtle to begin with, but really start to become a problem if you want to boost up 
different parts of your image and you start running across it. Well, you know, so if you, hopefully you can still see that light ring around here a little bit. Jumping back to the other one, you can see it's just totally gone. You know, now I don't really have that at all. It's nice and it isn't, you know, never going to be perfect. You always end up with some gradients here and there. But overall, this this image without doing any additional, you know, kind of noise reduction or sharpening or any of the other junk, you know, if I just wanted to post this out onto Instagram or share it with my friends, that kind of thing, this is a pretty good looking image, you know. I don't know that I would feel as good about showing them this one, right? Now, they may not notice these rings, but I'm forever going to see them. You know, on this one here, I feel pretty good about it. So I just kind of wanted to take that that quick way of showing kind of how these flat fields, even on pretty good images to begin with, uh, can make you know a, a pretty decent difference, um, and and also kind of give that that trick on making sure that you've got that unidirectional, or in some cases it's called a bidirectional, and it's checked by default. You know, having those check boxes uh, set up in a way to make sure that your filter wheel is always going around in the same direction. Um, but that's it, quick one today. Um, so after that, I hope everybody uh, has a lot more success <laughs> figuring out their issues with flat fields. I know that uh, for me, it was uh, it was something that took a long time to kind of get it the way that I really wanted it. Um, so that it was a nice, easy, repeatable process, but it is worth the time. You know, every other step you take after that uh, initial calibration to get this nice flat file uh, just makes it that much easier to, to have a, a pretty image at the end of the day. So till next time, I wish everybody clear skies. Thanks.